Lydia JL. She was absolutely beautiful um, and perfect in every way. Um, she had curly brown hair. Um, she had my chin and her daddy's feet, the cutest button nose. And she was just absolutely adorable. Three pounds, eight ounces. Welcome to Still a Part of Us, a place where moms and dads share the story of their child who was stillborn or who died in infancy. I'm Winter. And I'm Lee. We are grateful you joined us today. Please note that this is a story of loss and has triggers. Thanks to our lost parents who are willing to be vulnerable and share their children with us. If you're listening to this podcast, just know that on our YouTube channel, there are pictures and videos that are related to the stories that are being shared. Subscribe and share it with a friend that might need it and tell them to subscribe. Why? Because people need to know that even though our babies are no longer with us, they're still a part of us. Danielle, thank you so much for coming and talking with us today on Still a Part of Us. We, I, I have heard about you for so long and, and now it's just a privilege to meet you and have you on today to talk about your sweet Lydia. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, we're excited for you to be here. Um, so <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Tell us about um, who you are, kind of what you do right right now, and then can you tell us a little bit how your family looked when sure. Lydia was born? Absolutely. So um, I live in South Carolina in the Charleston area um, with my husband and two living children, Luke and Lila. Um, and I work full time for a um, large senior living company um, doing leadership development for our team members. Um, I've been in this role now for almost 10 years. Um, and I'm actually working remotely from here for that company. Um, so I work full time. Uh, my husband, Jonah, and I, we've been married for almost nine years. Um, so yeah, we, um, we moved here to South Carolina about eight, I guess it was almost eight years ago. I always get so thrown off by it. Um, so this is not like our original home. Oh, okay. We just <laughs> wanted to come south. Why um, not? My husband had found a job here, so we kind of made our way here. But yeah, that's that's a little bit about us. Um, just you know, staying busy with work and with my five-year-old son and three-year-old daughter. <laughs> they, I'm sure that they do keep you busy. Do you guys like to do? Uh, yes. You guys have any th things that you guys like to do as a family, or any personal hobbies that? Um, you, yeah, you have. Um, we really love, you know, the outdoors. We like just, you know, doing anything outside, um, whether it's going on a hike or even just hanging out in our backyard or going to the park or um, the beach. You know, we're not too far from the beach. So we love doing outdoor stuff. Um, I also really enjoy shopping, um, more like antique kind of shopping. Like oh. we have a lot of really cute antique shops down here. So Fun. I really like going to those and, you know, looking for like unique home decor or furniture, things like that. And my husband's pretty into that kind of stuff as well. So that's kind of a non-kid related thing that I like to do. Um, <laughs> and then I do spend too much time shopping for my daughter as well. <laughs> Little girls are super easy to shop for. I'm just saying. They are. <laughs> boys, <laughs> for I don't sure. know what the boys are just like the the clothes are not as <laughs> the co clothes yeah. are not as cute. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay, well, and as a little bit of just um background, how long ago at the time of this recording was Lydia born? She was born <clears throat> almost six and a half years ago. Um, so it's been you know, a, a good while now. It was October 13th, 2014. Yeah. So it's been, yeah, it's been a few years now. So I, I'm grateful that you've come on because I think this is, this will lend a little bit of a different perspective, having a little bit of time um, since yeah. your loss. So, so thank you again <laughs> for coming on. Of course. Yeah. Um. So I understand that Lydia was your first child. Is that, is that right? Yes. Yep. She was our first baby. And were you guys planning on getting pregnant with her? Was that something that was a little bit more of a surprise or, or did you guys have <laughs> fertility issues? I, I think it well, kind of runs the gambit, right? Yeah. I laugh a little bit because we weren't exactly trying, um, but there's a, a little bit of a story to it. So 
we had started to talk about trying and Uh my husband didn't really quite feel ready at the time. Um, but I had been on birth control for many years before Mm -hmm. that. And once I stopped, like my cycles were so out of like, out of whack, like really long. And, um, I, I was worried about it. I'm like, Oh gosh, am I going to have trouble conceiving? And I had went to my doctor and talked to him about it. And he's like, well, it's possible you're not ovulating. And he had given me some tips on like tracking it. So in the meantime, like I had started researching and I came across like this herbal tea called fertility. (laughs) And I had read that it could help get your cycles on track. So Uh I was like, oh, let me try this because I love to drink tea. Yeah. And I was not intending to get pregnant quickly on it. I was really only taking it just to get my cycles to be regular so that we'd be ready when it was time to try. So I started drinking the tea and I don't know how long, it was like probably a month later. And I noticed like, I don't know, I started getting these weird symptoms and I'm like, huh, like, could I possibly be pregnant? And like, you know, I didn't exactly Mm -hmm. miss a cycle because I had had such long cycles, but I ended up taking a test and surprisingly (laughs) enough, I was pregnant like within a month of starting that tea. And I'm like, whoops, like I did not really, you know, that was not the intention so fast. (laughs) So you were kind of planning it, but not necessarily planning it either. (laughs) Yeah, I'd say me buying that tea kind of pushed things along. But, you know, we were both super excited over the moon. Um, Yeah, we were just really, really thrilled. So it was like the best surprise, but it was a little bit of a surprise. Yeah. Had you guys, so had you guys been, you'd been married for a a few years by that time? Yeah, we had been married, gosh, I guess it was, I want to say a year and a half. It was either a year and a half or two and a half years. I get so confused thinking about the timing of all that. Yeah. But um, we had just, um, I guess it was a year and a half because it was July 2012 when we got married. And then we had just moved to South Carolina the summer prior. So oh, then okay. it was in the spring gotcha. right after we had moved that I found out I was pregnant. Um, so we're like in this new place. <laughs> yeah. Come, um, new job. No family new, around. Yeah. Yeah. And now we're going to have a baby. So it was a crazy but exciting time for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds so, yeah. Always crazy. <laughs> it happens yeah. that way. So you, how was your pregnancy? It sounds like you were a little on the sick side or... Had weird symptoms. (laughs) Um, My pregnancy, you know, it really wasn't too bad. I did have some nausea with her, but that was like the worst of it in terms of like symptoms. Like it really was not that bad. Like the nausea was on and off um, just in the first trimester. Um, We were like really nervous when we found out, like we were afraid to tell people because we do know people who've had miscarriages. Like Mm -hmm. we knew that that was really common. So, you know, we waited until we had our first ultrasound before we really started telling too many people, but then the pregnancy itself, you know, it went really well. Um, again, I didn't have any issues. I felt great after the first trimester. Um, yeah, I was just like super happy, felt really good. Like everything was just going perfectly Yeah, really. Um, and she looked great, you know, every time we went to the doctor to have our appointments. Everything always looked perfect with her. So we really didn't have any concerns, especially after we passed the first trimester, Mm -hmm. because, you know, at that time I was under the mindset that once you get through that point and your anatomy scan and, you know, everything looks good with those two things, then you're fine. I I guess I was one of those people who thought, oh, we're going to bring home our baby, you know, everything's going so well. So yeah, I really didn't have any any big issues or, or concerns or anything like that throughout the pregnancy. It was, it was a blessing to feel so good. (laughs) Yeah. Oh yeah. It is. It totally, cause some people are just sick the entire time and you're like, yes. Yeah. Uh, and at her anatomy scan, were you guys planning on finding out the gender? Yes. So I am rather impatient. So actually I am, I booked one of those little boutique ultrasound places. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like early, I don't remember if it was like 14 or 16 weeks, like whenever it is that you can book those and, and find out the gender. So we um, we went to one of those places to do that. And we did it in a little bit of a unique way. Um, my husband found out the gender, but I did not. And then 
he surprised me and, and captured it on video. So um, we had gone to the store and like picked out a boy outfit and a girl outfit. And he, he was supposed to wrap up the outfit in the bag mm-hmm. and then like watch me open it, like record me open it just to capture the surprise yeah. on camera. So so the, so the uh, ultrasound person told him, you know, the gender. And then we went to this little Greek restaurant and sat outside and we have a really nice video where I opened it up and oh. pulled out the uh, little pink outfit. And I was really shocked, to be honest. For some reason, I always had in my mind that I would only have boys. I don't know why. Oh, <laughs> um, I always wanted a girl, but I just always was like, I'm never going to have a girl. Like, I know I'm only going to have boys. I'm going to be a boy so, mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong no, with no. You know, having boys, but I just always, you know, had that in my mind that I would only have boys. Um, So I was really surprised, um, super happy. My husband was, I think he was surprised too. And um, yeah, that's how we found out that she was a girl. Awesome. And did you guys choose the name Lydia for, I I guess, I I guess, when did you guys choose the name? Did you kind of start formulating when you found out um, that she was going to be a girl? Yeah, we started thinking about it pretty early on and debated for a while. Um, And then we picked the name Lydia probably sometime when I was in the second trimester. So not too long before she was born. But yeah, we decided on the name Lydia. My husband really wanted it to be a biblical name. Mm. Um, So I was kind of going through all the female names in the Bible. (laughs) And I really liked Lydia. I liked that it's, you know, somewhat unique as well. And just a pretty name. Yeah. Um, So that's how we picked Lydia. And then her middle name is actually pretty unique as well. Again, it's Mm J-L, J-A-E-L-L-E. And so my husband had read about a name in the Bible, which I think is Yael. It's J-A-E-L. It's like a heroine in the Bible. I don't know. I wasn't familiar with it. Okay. And I was like, well, if we spell it J-A-E-L, like people are going to think it's jail, you know, like I just, (laughs) we got to change it up just a little. (laughs) I was not really feeling it. Um, So we had not actually decided on her middle name. But then when we were at the hospital after I gave birth to her, um, you know, I thought I thought that was the best name because I knew my husband really liked it. And it was unique. And and on um, another cool part about it is the E-L-L-E. You know, it's kind of like my name, Danielle. Yeah, there's a little bit of tie. Yeah, that it has that feature. So that's how we picked her name. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Okay. Well, that's, I, I always like to know about how the names come about. So, (laughs) yeah. So, um, everything is looking great. You're feeling good. And tell us what happens. What, what, yeah. yeah. When do you find out? Yeah. Everything again was going really well. Actually at that point in our life, um, you know, we had rented a place when we first moved here to South Carolina and there, our lease came up. So we ended up house hunting and bought a new house, um, you know, in August. And then again, Lydia was born in October. So we had just moved into a new house and every house we went into, you know, we were imagining, is this where we're going to raise our baby? And, you know, so anyway, we had moved into this new house, everything in life just felt like it was going so good. Um, you know, we were approaching the end of the pregnancy, or at least I was getting to the third trimester. Mm -hmm. So I'd had a baby shower. Um, We had started painting her new room in our new house and getting the crib set up and everything like that. Like everything was just going perfectly fine. And I even remember at one point, like, I just felt so like guilty. Like I kept thanking God every day, like that we were being like, I just felt like we were so blessed. Like we had this beautiful new house. We lived in this new location. We're having a baby. Like, I don't know why. Like, I just felt like things were going so good. And I just had this weird worry in my mind that like Mm. something was going to happen. Like, I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it, but I just remember having that feeling. And now looking back on it, I'm like, oh, like, I don't know. It just, it always stands out to me that I kind of had that feeling before anything bad actually happened. Yeah. But Hmm. Anyway, yeah, so everything had been going well. And about a week or I guess it was two or three weeks before um, we had done the baby shower and everything. And so it was then a weekend um, when everything kind of happened. 
um, I had been a little bit sick the week before, like mm-hmm. with a sore throat and I can't remember if I had a little bit of a fever or not. Um, so I had been a little bit sick the week prior. And then by the time the weekend rolled around, I started feeling much better. So I was, um, just, you know, excited to be feeling better and like doing a lot of stuff. Like it was a beautiful weekend. We were running errands and going to lunch. And, um, I was washing like the mountain of baby clothes that we had for Lydia, (laughs) Like we had tons of stuff, not just from our baby shower and gifts, but we were given like hand-me-downs. And oh, yeah. when we were in Virginia for my baby shower, I um, we had stumbled upon a yard sale that had like tons of the cutest baby girl stuff. Really? So we like really You're loaded like, up like mm-hmm. all the way up to 18 months. So anyway, I was like doing all this laundry and um, folding the baby clothes. And I just have this vivid memory from that weekend standing in my laundry room, like looking at the little bitty socks and, um, just smiling to myself, thinking about like how excited I was to, to be, become a mom and, um, how close we were getting to her being born. And again, just feeling so grateful and excited. Um, cause you know, nothing was, nothing was wrong at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was, that was like Saturday. And then also into Sunday, I was still kind of doing, doing the um, laundry kind laundry. of thing. Um, and Sunday morning we, uh, or actually let me back up. So Saturday, that Saturday I went to uh, Chick-fil-A for dinner and picked up food and I picked up a strawberry milkshake. Cause that was one of the things like I always craved with Lydia was really strawberries and ice cream. So I treated myself to a strawberry milkshake that night and, um, came home and I remember saying to my husband oh Lydia's like dancing around like crazy tonight like she was going nuts in my belly and I thought it was so cute like oh she loved that strawberry milkshake um was she fairly active generally or like it was like on and off so at that point in my pregnancy I was 30 weeks so you know once you get to 28 weeks their movements should be um you know pretty predictable, which Mm -hmm. I had no idea at the time. Um, but I have since learned that, but yeah, her movements would kind of be on and off. So even like the weekend prior to that and the weekend before that, like there would be times where I'm like, is she moving enough? And I wasn't really sure. And I had expressed it to my husband. Um, and I even mentioned it to the uh, nurse at, at my last doctor's visit, which was two weeks prior to the time we lost her. I said, is it normal for her to you know, be quiet sometimes and not move as much. And she, she's just like, well, you know, if that happens, just uh, drink some juice, lay down or, you know, eat something cold, eat some ice cream and that should get her going again. So, you know, she really kind of just made it seem like it wasn't a big deal and that maybe, you know, she just needs something to wake her up. So I had that in the back of my mind. Um, And I'd even, I guess, mentioned, I don't remember this specifically, but my husband remembers me asking the doctor at that visit, like, should I be counting kicks? Because he asked me, he's like, are you feeling the baby move? Like, that's all the doctor asked. Yeah. I was like, well, yeah, you know, (laughs) like, what a strange, I don't know. That's a strange question to me because that's like a yes or no. Yeah. Yeah. uh, Question. And yes, like that just not really going to tell him much. And then no, it's like, that would be a horrible thing. Yeah. To s- hear. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but so you, my you doctor, specifically like, asked him, you specifically asked him if I, if you should be counting kicks. Yes. So and you, I didn't even remember it until my husband brought it up. And then once he mentioned that, I'm like, you know what? I do kind of remember asking him that, like, do I need to count the movements? Cause I wasn't really sure what you were what supposed to, to do. do. Okay. Okay. And my doctor was like, he was like a much older doctor. So he'd been practicing for many years. And I kind of feel like he had like that old school mindset, like, I would ask him different things. Like I even asked him, like, can I sleep on my back? Because I had read that you should not sleep on your back during pregnancy. And I was having trouble getting comfortable. And he told me, oh, that's fine. You know, it's an old wives tale. Like do what you need to do to get comfortable. Mm. So like, I'm like, okay. So looking back on it, I'm like, ugh. like I loved him as a, as a person. He was a great man, but as a doctor, I'm like, gosh, I really, really wish I had gone to somebody who was more, you know, more, um, focused on like the latest research and and really, you know, telling me what I need to do to keep my baby safe Yeah. versus thinking these things are, you know, like old wives tales. Um, so anyway, you know, she, again, she was like 
somewhat active, I guess, but I just didn't, I was not aware that I really needed to pay attention to her movements that like, you know, it wouldn't be normal for her to slow down sometimes. Yeah. Um, and I was in like one of those due date groups on Facebook. I don't know if you're familiar with those, but like, yep. it's like the December due date group for all babies. Yep. Um, yep. For all women who are pregnant with babies due in December. So I was in one of those and like, I remember sometimes I'd see people post about their baby, like not moving much. And then everyone's like, oh, they're probably just sleepy. Like my baby did that too. And they woke up. So I had remembered reading posts like that. So I just assumed that, you know, sometimes babies get sleepy and they slow down. Yeah. Um, so that's like all I knew about movement. Um, so anyway, that Saturday night, again, she was moving around like crazy. Um, and then my husband and I watched a movie and it was like super late that night. I went to bed and I was like wiped out that night. Um, I remember laying down in bed and I do remember thinking at the time, like, oh, she's not kicking around. Usually like when I'd lay in bed, she'd like give me some kicks. Like, yeah. Once I laid down, but I was like, oh, I'm up later than normal. I'm so tired. I'm sure she's tired. So um, I went to bed and I swear I slept on my back that night because I was so tired. And again, my doctor like, I remember thinking I probably shouldn't, but I'm like, well, he said it was okay. Yeah. I'm so tired. I just need to get comfortable. So I slept that way that night. Um, and then the next morning, it was a Sunday. So we got up and went to church um, like we normally, you know, do on a Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And um, after church, we went to lunch and we finally decided like, yeah, let's get maternity photos. Like I was going to book those and um, then we went out shopping for rugs. Like it was just like a totally normal day. Yeah. Um, and then we got back home and I started doing more of that laundry that I was talking about earlier. Um, and at one point that day, like it was probably mid afternoon, like I was just sitting on the floor in the room going through that laundry and my sweet dog was there with me. And I remember I was sitting on the floor and she came and like rested her head by my belly. And I just thought it was the sweetest thing. Um, like she wanted to be close to the baby or something. Yeah. And in that moment, I remember I just started crying. Like it was so weird. Like I just felt really emotional out of the blue. Um, and now when I look back on it, I'm like, did, did, did I like subconsciously like know something was going on? Did my dog know something yeah. was going on? Like, yeah. you know, at the time mentally, like I didn't think anything was wrong, but like, I was like super emotional. My dog was being all cuddly. Um, and then soon after that, I was like, gosh, I'm really not feeling Lydia move much today. So I went downstairs and found my husband. He was outside on our screened in porch. And I told him, I was like feeling a little bit worried because she really wasn't moving much. And we talked about it for a few minutes, but he's like, well, you know, you've felt that way like last weekend too, which was true. Like mm -hmm. the weekend prior, you know, I was like, is she moving enough? And so we talked about that. We're like, yeah, that's true. Um, you know, she's probably just sleepy. So, you know, we decided like, there's really nothing to be worried about and carried on about the day. Um, then I remember I took my dog for a walk and like the day kind of went on. And then that evening, like I mentioned being emotional before, like I was in like a horrible mood. Like I just wanted to cry about everything. Again, oh. it was so weird. Like I didn't want to cook dinner. Like we had nothing to cook. And I remember like we drove to Walmart just to go get like something to cook up really quick. And I just wanted to get out of there. Like, cause again, I was so emotional for whatever reason. And then we came home and cooked the dinner and we sat down on the couch after dinner um, and at the time we were really into the show, The Walking Dead, oh. <laughs> which yeah. is not something I would typically be into like zombies, but my husband was totally into it and I got into it. So <laughs> we sat down to watch The Walking Dead and I was like, gosh, she's not moving. And like, that was really concerning to me mm -hmm. because after dinner at night, when I sat on the couch, like that was like her guaranteed movement time, time. to move. And so since she still wasn't moving and I had already been worried earlier in the day, I was like, okay, this is freaking me out a little bit, but I didn't actually say anything to my husband yet. I didn't want to like over worry him. So mm -hmm. I got up and I made a bowl of ice cream. Like I was doing everything that nurse had told me to do. Um, I got ice cream 
And then I drank like orange juice right after. Like it was really like a disgusting mix of I was like, like all the sugar. I know. And, I was like, you're all sugared up now. Yeah. Like, oh, I was doing anything I could to get her to move and, you know, like poking at my belly. Yeah. Yeah. And nothing was going on. And so like in my head, I'm like really starting to worry, but trying just to stay calm. And then I started texting my best friend, Nancy. Um, she's had a baby before or had had a baby before at the time. So I was just telling her what was going on. I'm like, you know, I'm not really feeling the baby move. I don't know what to do. And she was like, you know, you probably should call, call your, you know, on-call doctor Mm -hmm. just to let them know. Um, At that point it was a Sunday night. So I'm I'm like, should I really call or should I just wait till, you know, tomorrow? But I was like, yeah, she's right. So I called and they said, yeah, why don't you um, come on down to labor and delivery and we'll hook you up to the monitor and check things out just to be safe. Um, and that, that is always kind of stuck in my mind that she said, you know, just to be safe. Um, so I was like, okay. Uh, so I went back downstairs, told my husband everything that was going on. Like at that point, I hadn't even told him I was calling because mm-hmm. I just didn't want him to know. And he was, you know, totally supportive um, you know, all right, well, let's go. Um, so we went and started getting ready. Um, we almost didn't even take our dog out to go potty. Cause I was thinking, you know, we're going to go, we'll be back in a couple hours. Exactly. Um, but we decided just to let her out real quick. So we took her out. Um, and then I like changed my clothes and again, like I lost it in the bathroom. Like I just started bawling. Like I didn't really think that like something terrible had happened to our baby like the last thing on my mind was that she had died but I was just like so worried and like what's going on I'm like are we gonna have a baby tonight like I'm not ready yet yeah um because again I was 30 weeks at the time so you know I I just was like what is going on so we made our way to the hospital which is was about like 30 35 minutes from our house Mm -hmm. um And yeah, I vividly remember that drive there. You know, my husband held my hand the whole way and I just had my hand on my belly, like in my head, like praying and praying and talking to Lydia in my head, like, come on, just kick me, like, just do something. And um, I feel like one time I thought maybe she did kick, but I wasn't really sure. Mm -hmm. Um, So we got to the hospital and um, we had to go in through the emergency room because of the time of day. It was like late at night, like, I don't know. 10 o'clock by that point and I even remember I was like I'm sorry like to my husband because he had to work at five the next morning I'm like you're gonna be so tired like I was just worried about all these random things yeah (laughs) um so anyway we got to the hospital and then this nurse from labor and delivery named Susie she was super sweet super like cheery and upbeat she came in and greeted us and we were just making small talk like walking down to the labor and delivery and Um, We got to a room, she had me change into a gown and I did that. Like, I remember changing into the gown and like feeling like, okay, we're finally going to like make sure everything's fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I got into the uh, hospital bed and Susie got the Doppler out to try to find Lydia's heartbeat. And yeah, at that point, like it was, I know a lot of people say this and it really was like the loudest silence I've ever heard. Like was just piercing like you know she's moving it all over my belly and usually right away they pick it up at that point yeah um and it was just silent 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 um but then a few times they would pick up my heartbeat and I didn't know that it was mine or hers but I'm like oh we found it like oh there it is like but it was just mine so that was going on for what felt like forever but I don't know how long that was um she went and got another nurse to come and help her So she came in, they were like scrambling around and I'm just thinking in my head, like what in the world is going on? Mm -hmm. My husband's next to me holding my hand still. And then they're like, okay, let's go. We have to go get the doctor to do an ultrasound. So I'm like, okay, like finally, like, please bring the ultrasound in here and let's like see that everything's fine. Like I was getting really kind of frustrated in my head at that point Mm because I just wanted to know that everything was fine. Um, So this doctor came in who we had never seen or met before and, you know, rolled in this little ultrasound machine and pulled it up on my left side. And I looked over and 
first thing I saw was Lydia's, you know, perfect little profile with her little button nose. And then he moved the wand and it was right over her heart. And he said, you know, I'm, I'm very sorry. I can't remember his exact words. It was like, I think like at first he said, like, I think there's no heartbeat, but then he's like, I mean, I, I know there's no heartbeat. Like sh- she's uh-huh. gone. Um, and I was just like in complete shock. Um, I couldn't look at him. I couldn't look at my husband. I was just sitting or laying there in the bed and like looking at this wall in front of me, like staring at this wall, like in complete shock, trying to understand what he just said. And, um, you know, it was just the worst, worst possible thing to have to hear um, as a mother. And, you know, that was really, really hard to take in. Um, And immediately, you know, I started thinking, like, what did I do? Like, how could this happen? You know, did I, was it something from me being sick last week? The nurse told me I could take a Tylenol. Should I have not taken the Tylenol? Um, Like, did I eat lunch meat and not microwave it long enough? Like, yep. Every, every possible thing. I was totally blaming myself. Like, you know, what did I do? Because I am her mother and, you know, it was my job I felt to protect her and I was just completely shocked you know and we had known that at that point that she was healthy so it didn't seem like something else happened but you know we weren't really sure at that point but um, anyway I was just laying there in shock and my sweet husband dropped down to the floor and and started praying um, which was you know very sweet and needed at the time Um, and then after the doctor left the room you know I don't even remember the conversation my husband and I had. We were both just like completely shocked and trying to understand what happened. Then they had the doctor on call come in, the one who I had called. And she came in soon after and started talking about the plan. You know, like, yeah, obviously she said she's very sorry. She was very caring and everything like that. But then it's like, you know, we need to talk about next steps. You need to be induced and... I hadn't even thought about that yet, you know? Right. I'm like, wait a minute. Like, I just found out my baby died. And I guess my mind hadn't gone to yet, like, what happens next? Like, obviously, she's not just going to disappear. Um, So she started talking about that. And I had already been like, I don't know why I was so terrified about the whole process of giving birth, like, even to a live baby. Mm -hmm. So I was like, way even more terrified of having to do that with my baby who died um so I'm like you know can't we do a c-section like is there anything else like at that point you know my mind's not really even working the way that it it should I just wanted you know wanted it I I don't know I don't know what I wanted but yeah I was like is a c-section an option and she said that it was but that you know they wouldn't recommend it the recovery's longer and then we'd also you know, that would make it more difficult for having another baby or like, we'd have to wait longer. Mm -hmm. We wanted to have another baby. And, um, you know, I thought about it some more and it was so late that night, they weren't going to start anything to the next, till the next morning. So I did think about it more and decided to move ahead with the induction, um, versus doing a C-section, but they did end up rolling us to another room where that would be a little bit more private Mm -hmm. because, we're in labor and delivery and there's all these moms giving birth to living children, lots of crying, lots of, um, you know, baby noises going on. So they moved me down to another room um, that would be a little bit more private. And um, at that point, you know, my husband, I asked him to, you know, let, let a few people know. I think my best friend Nancy had been checking in on me since I had been texting with her and he called my dad and at some point called my mom too. And I don't know, I just, I couldn't bear to talk to anybody. I couldn't bear to text anybody. Like I just could not bear to be the one to get the words out to anybody to let them know that our daughter had died. Um, 
so thankfully my husband, you know, found the strength to, to make those phone calls and, and do those things. Um, so anyway, we stayed at the hospital that night. I guess somehow I slept. I think they had given me some Ambien. So I slept for a little bit. And then the next morning, like early in the morning, they put in the Cytotec and started the induction process. Um, and by then, like my dad had driven down from Virginia. I think he drove, yeah, I think he drove down. He was in New York and like flew back to Virginia and drove down oh. to uh, to be with us. And my mom and stepdad, they were living nearby at the time. They had just moved down here as well. So they came to the hospital and um, visited with us some. Um, but anyway, early that morning, they started the induction process and that kind of went on throughout the day. I did have an epidural um, that was recommended to me and I was just like so nervous about the pain and stuff. I was like, okay, so I, I did the epidural. Um, and then throughout the day, like things were progressing slowly. They weren't, weren't really moving along that fast. Mm -hmm. Um, and I even remember like early evening, I wasn't that far along. Like, I don't remember how dilated I was, but it really wasn't that much. So I was like, okay. But then all of a sudden, like not very long after the doctor checked me, like I started feeling a lot of pressure and had to get them to come in and check. And all of a sudden, like, I was like ready to go. Like, they're like, you need to start pushing now. And I was like, no, like, I don't know at that point, like, I guess waiting up to it, like I was obviously very upset throughout the day, but I was like hanging in there. But then once I found out it was time to push, I was like, so upset. Like, I guess I just didn't want, I felt like I was approaching the end, I guess, you know, like once she's totally. out, like this is really going to be over and I didn't feel ready, but I don't think I ever would have felt ready. Um, so Anyway, I started pushing and it really wasn't, you know, anything too bad. Like, I don't know exactly how long I pushed, but um, throughout the whole thing, I just kept praying for a miracle. Like, please, God, let them be wrong. Please, you know, let us hear her cry. This is all, you know, still thinking in my head, like there can be some kind of miracle, like they could be wrong. Um, but she was born and, um, you know, that. I know I said earlier that not hearing the heartbeat was the loudest si silence, but I guess truly once she was born and we heard the silence, that was really the loudest, loudest silence I've ever heard. Um, I knew she was out and I wasn't hearing anything. And they had asked me, like, did I want her to be cleaned up before they handed her to me or did I want them to just hand her to me? And I was just so scared, you know, I didn't know what she was going to look like. And so nobody, I'd asked them to clean her up. And nobody had talked to you. None of the nurses or doctors had well, talked to you. That about. is a good question. They did. The nurses there were amazing. They were so sweet and supportive. And yeah, before I gave birth, like during throughout that day, they talked to me some like, do you want to hold her? And I was like, oh, I don't know. Like I was so scared and didn't mm -hmm. know what to do. But they really encouraged me to do that. And I'm so like, I can't imagine if I if I hadn't you know, held her. Um, and then they also talked about now I lay me down to sleep, uh, mm -hmm. photography and asked if we wanted pictures. And then again, I, at that time, I'm like pictures, like it's not something I ever thought about, but I'm so grateful that we said yes and, and opted to do that. Um, but yeah, they did say, you know, I could have her cleaned up or put on me, but, and they didn't really know how she would look. I guess it's kind of hard to say because they don't know like how long. How long she has been. Yeah. How long she'd been, you know, gone and that kind of thing. So I had them clean, clean her up, but I could see them like, you know, taking her over to the warmer thing to get her cleaned up. And I remember them I was like so sad. I'm like, I just want her now. Like, that's what I was thinking. Oh. Like, give me my baby. Um, but they cleaned her up and handed her to me and she was just, you know, absolutely beautiful. I was truly amazed, you know, because I didn't know what to expect, especially since she had passed away, but she just looked perfect. She looked like a perfect, beautiful baby. Um, she, you know, had these cute little lips. And um, again, I was shocked by her hair. Like, I couldn't believe she, she had dark hair and like the little waves in it were so cute. And 
she was just precious and so beautiful. Um, and I held her in my arms, um, and, you know, did not want to let her go, um, ever. Uh, we did learn that the umbilical cord was very tight around her neck and her right ankle, like both. And it was so tight that there were like indentations on her neck and her ankle. So they were, you know, fairly certain that that had, that is what happened to cause her to pass away, unfortunately. But yeah, we, um, you know, it was 7.56 PM. Okay. And that is so weird. I literally just said that. And the clock on my laptop is 7 56 p.m yeah I was about to say I was like oh yeah that is, <laughs> that is exactly. so weird <laughs> um so she was born at 7 56 p.m and we you know held her that night for as long as we could um again my my dad was there and my mom and stepdad they all got to to meet her and um at the time, you know, again, we were new to South Carolina. We didn't have many friends here Mm -hmm. or much of a support system, but we had been in a small group at church and had some friends through that. And they were just the biggest blessing throughout all of this. You know, they came to the church too, or I'm sorry, to the hospital too. And, um, a couple of them got to meet Lydia at some point. Um, and we were just so grateful. Like I was like, I was like proud to show her off. It was, you know, kind of weird. Like, you know, it was so horrible what had happened, but like, to me, she's this beautiful, perfect baby. And I wanted everybody to see her and know her. I wanted as many people to know her as we could. So anyway, late that night, um, the nurses did suggest, you know, that she go to the morgue. I don't think they actually said it that way. And I wasn't even really thinking about it, but like, they really encouraged me to try to rest Mm -hmm. and that they would bring her back in the morning. So I reluctantly agreed to it. And that was, you know, they had to give me Ambien to get me to sleep again, but I did sleep a little bit, but every time I woke up, I'm just like, where's my baby? Like, you know, I want my baby back. Um, so as soon as I woke up that morning, I was, you know, trying to page the nurse to bring her back to me as quickly as possible. Cause you know, it was terrible yeah. to be without her. And I just wanted her there. Like, I wish, I wish I could have held her all night. Like I wanted to, um, but I was afraid like I'd drop her or something. Cause I really was getting so tired and they brought her back that morning. And then we spent some time with her like several hours that day the day after she was born. Um, We didn't have a cuddle cot or anything like that. So I just held her in my arms and my husband held her some. um, But I will say, I do feel kind of guilty that I didn't really let anybody else hold her other than my husband. Like I never let my mom or my dad hold her. And I really wish I could have given them that experience. Um, My husband's parents did come down too, but it was like later that day. So Mm -hmm. they didn't actually, you know, get to hold her or anything either. You know, it makes me sad now that nobody else got to know what it was like to hold her except for me and my husband. But like selfishly, I was like, this is the only time I'm going to get to hold my baby. Like I want to do it for as long as I can. Yeah. Um, So we had talked to the doctor about whether or not to do an autopsy. And he, the doctor that we had seen at the time did recommend it just to make sure there were no other issues. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it was pretty obvious that it was the cord accident, but with it being our first baby, they said, you know, it's probably good just to rule other things out. So we did agree to do the autopsy. Um, And so, you know, throughout that morning, the nurse kept talking to me about how they have to start the autopsy within a certain amount of time. And you know, that we'd have to move ahead with that fairly soon. Um, and, you know, throughout that day, especially like Lydia was changing a lot, like her color was changing her skin, you know, it started peeling some and that was really devastating to see. Yeah. Um, like in my mind, like it wasn't going to, like, I was going to hold her forever. Like nobody was going to take my baby from me, but the nurse kept telling me. And then my husband, you know, he's like, you know, it probably is going to be time soon just because of how she was changing. So yeah. 
And did your hospital have a policy on how long you could actually keep her? Or was well, they didn't tell you and there was nothing in particular? Yeah, they didn't really say anything like that there was any sort of policy. But yeah, but just like that next morning after we had her, they were pretty like I felt like the one nurse like she was trying to be nice, but I felt like she was getting a little pushy like with, you know, we have to it's time to take her. I don't know exactly what time it was, but it was probably like around 12 or one that day that I handed her over to the nurse, um, which was really hard yeah. to have to hand her over kind of for the last time. So yeah, it's the worst thing ever. It really is. Yeah. So that was our time spent with Lydia at the hospital. Sorry if that was a super long <laughs> No story. I um I I actually wanted to ask you. So you got your picture. So you got pictures taken with. So I lay me down to sleep, and mm -hmm. um, were you guys able to get like handprints or footprints or yeah. molds or anything like that while you were there? Yes. Um. Yeah. The now I lay me down to sleep photographer. She was amazing. She got beautiful pictures that I'm forever grateful for. Um. They did get Lydia's handprints and footprints, which I'm so thankful for as well. Um, I do wish I had been given more guidance in terms of like how to make the most of our time with her because mm -hmm. I just felt so scared. Like I just had her wrapped up in that, you know, blanket or her gown for so long. Like I was scared to really like look at her all over. And I didn't think like that I could give her a bath. Like none of these things crossed my mind or like brush her hair, you know, things that I've heard like other other parents have done when their babies are stillborn. Um, you know, I wish somebody had told me like I could do those things because again, they didn't cross my mind and I was just too scared to even think about, like I was too scared to like m lift up her gown and like see all of her because I didn't know, you know, what she would look like. Um, yeah. So, you know, I'm very grateful for what they did give us, but you know, just those things I wish we could have could have done. Like I wish there was some kind of guidebook for yeah. somebody who's lost a baby, which I've actually thought about like making one to give to the hospital, to give to parents going through loss, just things for them to consider. Cause yeah. nobody goes in there prepared for that or knowing what to do. Nope. You don't have any clue so, what you're doing. Yeah. You have no clue. Um, this, it just blindsides you. Yeah. And uh, also in the hospital, you know, they're asking us like what we plan to do. Like, do we want to have her cremated or buried? And um, that was, you know, an awful decision to have to make. We had no idea what to do. And it felt like they kept coming and asking, like, have you made your, have you picked your funeral home yet? I'm like, no, like, I don't even know anything about a funeral home, yeah. what ones there are, like, um eventually we just picked one that was like somewhat close to home. And for me, like I could not, I could not let my mind like think about cremation as an option at the time. Um, I guess it was just like too much for me to understand, like she, that she would just suddenly like, I don't know. I felt like her body would just suddenly disappear. And I just couldn't like for myself, I couldn't wrap my head around it. And I remember some people trying to encourage me to do that because then, you know, she could technically like be with us wherever, like mm -hmm. in her home. And mm -hmm. again, we were new to this state. So, you know, we don't know where we'll be buried one day. We did not have her cremated. So what we did is we found a cemetery that has like a mausoleum. So oh, okay. um, she's like in, in a mausoleum. So she could easily be, you know, we could take her casket out and move, move her at some point. Um, but, you know, I have mixed feelings about that now, too. Looking back, um, when she first passed away, like, we would, I could not go to sleep without going to the cemetery and, like, telling her goodnight. And I just felt so terrible, like, leaving her there all by herself. And even now, like, six and a half years later, every time I visit her, I'm just like, I'm so sorry. Like, I hate, hate leaving, even though I know she's not actually there. Like, personally, yeah. I believe she's in heaven. And... Um, but just remembering her little casket and her body going in there is really hard, um, and leaving her there. But that was kind of 
what I guess was best at the time when we had to make that decision that that was all I could get myself to do yeah. um we did have a memorial service for her it was a smaller service um my best friends came down for it and some of Jonah's family um up in Virginia and West Virginia came down um, and we did a service for her a few days later and I even we had opted even for an open casket because again like I just felt so proud of her and wanted people to meet her and see her Um, but that was really hard I wasn't expecting her to look so different in the casket like I felt like she didn't she didn't look like the Lydia that I held a few days before so that was really hard and just like I kept holding or putting her hand around my finger and her hand was so stiff and that was just really really hard for me but I was I was really grateful to see her again though and yeah um you know give her that service um but that service was really difficult for me and I, I like I can hardly remember anything about it other than actually like seeing her and touching her um like I don't remember anything that anybody said or anything like that I was just still in too much shock and I do remember my brother asked if I wanted um him to take any pictures at the service which I think was really nice of him to ask um and he and my sister-in-law had come down you know a couple days prior to that too to be there for us Um, And I was like, no, like, I don't know. I was just so angry to be at a funeral service for my daughter. And I told him no, but looking back, I really wish I had said yes, because I don't remember a lot about it. And I, you know, was not in a good place at the time, but I really wish I could have um, had some memories of that service to look back on. Yeah. Yeah. but then when we got to the cemetery, like that part was nicer. Um, they had taken us like in a, one of those small limos, my husband and I, and it was just such a surreal experience. Like we were in the back seat, me, and then our daughter's casket and my husband. And like, I remember driving there. I'm like, this is not real. Like this is not happening. No. It was just so bizarre. Um, and then we got to the cemetery and my best friends had gone and picked up my dog, which was so sweet. So she could be there. And um, we had had balloons, so we did like a balloon release and, um, you know, laid her to rest there. So that part of it was beautiful, and I do remember that. It's just like the actual service itself was really, really hard for me, and um, like I wanted to like hide from everybody. I actually did go in this back room for a while just to like hide because I couldn't face, you know, everybody everybody was so sad. And obviously I was so sad too. But at that point I was like, I couldn't even cry anymore because I was like in this weird shock phase. And I was like, I just want, I just want to be alone. I just don't want to be here. Yeah. 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 So. (sighs) Yeah. That's kind of how we, how we um, honored her life at the time and, you know, laid her to rest, which it's still so bizarre to say and think about, but I'm so sorry, and I really appreciate you Thank telling you. that story. Like I, Thank you. Uh, Thanks for listening. <laughs> yeah, I just, I uh, there was quite a few things that you said that I, um, it brought back some memories and some emotions, and and yeah, kind of some, a little bit of regret actually, because of yeah, yeah. I wish I would have done this or so. But thank yeah. you so much for sharing about Lydia I think that's yeah anyway as sad as the story is you know it's I love any opportunity I have to share about her and just let people know how loved she was and how precious and important she was to us you know the event itself is sad the fact that she died is is sad but she herself she's an amazing little girl so I just I don't know I love sharing about her any chance I can because you're a proud mom. So I think that's, that's right. That's wonderful. (laughs) Thank you so much again, Danielle. Thank you.